I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and um, well, this is certainly something a bit different, isn't it? This is the new Volkswagen Crafter, Volkswagen's large van that competes with vehicles like the Ford Transit and the Renault Master. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, large vans aren't my specialty. What I know about is passenger cars. With that said, when Volkswagen asked me if I wanted to come and check out the all new Crafter, which is a once in a decade opportunity, I thought, why the hell not? Let's go and actually check out what a vehicle like this is actually like to live with and to drive. Especially because I thought to myself, what if you decided to start your own business and owner operator sort of job, maybe in landscape gardening, in joinery, as a courier service, something like that. You've only ever really driven passenger cars and utes like me, and all of a sudden you need to choose something a lot bigger and more practical. So, if you bear with me, that's exactly the kind of experience we're gonna have today. Now, the Crafter is really all about customization and Volkswagen tell us that there will be 59 different versions of this vehicle available by the start of next year. So how does that happen? Well, this Crafter is basically what you get if you just pick a standard version. So this is normal wheelbase, normal roof height in the van. You can also choose an extended wheelbase version of the van and an even longer version that measures in at almost seven and a half meters long. And those two longer wheelbase editions of the Crafter also have higher roofs. This one is actually shorter than six meters. So as large vans go, that's pretty compact. Also available are cab chassis versions, either single or dual cab. Then once you add in two diesel engines, two gearboxes and a choice of front, all or rear wheel drive, you can see just how complex the range can get. The other thing is that the new Crafter is 100% of Volkswagen creation. The last one was a joint venture and a shared platform with Mercedes-Benz. Now VW are keen to say that the new Crafter really is their baby, so to speak, from the ground up. And that includes all of the ease of use, easy to drive, easy to live with, creature comforts of any normal VW. So does that translate to reality? Well, we're gonna find out. First, we'll jump in the load bay, see how practical this thing really is. We'll have a look around the cab. What's it like to drive all day long? And then we'll go for a little drive out in the new Crafter. So without further ado, let's make a start. Now, as crafters go, this is the small one, but that's how we are dealing with a large van here and Volkswagen can sell you quite a few other solutions if what you need is actually a smaller vehicle for your operation, namely the T6 series of van, like the Transporter, there's the Caddy underneath that, and some people will find that the Amarok uh, utility would be a better vehicle for their line of work. That said, if what you need is maximum dimensions in the cargo bay, uh, the crafter is where it's at. Now, this particular one is a front wheel drive version with the TDI 410 engine, and the payload that this thing can take is about 1.4 tonnes. But that said, with the Crafter range, you can get up to a payload of 2.4 tonnes, and that's in the single cab chassis variant with rear wheel drive. Now, what you do have here at the back of the Crafter is a dual door opening that measures in at just over 1550 mil. And then you look straight down the load bay which measures in at just over 1830 mil wide, but between the arches, it's 1380 mil. That said, you can easily get standard pallets into the back of the crafter without issue. So we'll just close these up. And if you follow me around to the left-hand side, as standard on the crafter, you just get one sliding door. This vehicle is actually fitted with the optional right-hand sliding door as well. So if you want to load from both sides, that's an accessory that you'll need to tick on this vehicle. Now, this is the first time front wheel drive has been available in the Crafter. And what that's let Volkswagen do is actually get the access height down by 100 millimeters. And the 100 mil difference in height does mean that it's a nice easy step into the back of the Crafter. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this is pretty much the default Volkswagen Crafter. It's about 17, 20 mils high. So as you can see for me at about 1.83 meters, I can't quite stand up. But in a second, we'll check out the higher roof version and I will be able to stand. Now you can option up the back of the crafter with different flooring systems, fitted out walls and sort of the pièce de résistance is you can get a universal flooring system with uh, sliding rails that lets you fit modular components. But even as it comes, you get plenty of tie down points here in the back of the crafter. 
as I said, about 1380 between those arches that don't intrude too badly there. And we'll check out a couple of other combinations for the back of the crafter van now. Also on display were a number of fitted out crafters highlighting the fact that conversions can now be delivered through the Volkswagen dealer network before the van reaches the operator. Here's a courier fit out with shelving and floor components making use of the modular walls and flooring. See, I can do this. And there was even a crafter ambulance done up demonstrating just how spacious this van is and also the way that telematic and other electronic systems can hook into the crafter's electrics right out of the box. This crafter is the upgrade from the silver one. So this is a long wheelbase with the high roof. You can actually go longer and taller again, but most people won't need that extreme capacity. I think this middle setting will be pretty perfect for most operators. Now, the doors open up just as wide, about 15, 50 mil as the previous version, but you'll see the big difference is that I'm able to stand up with lots of room to spare. Essentially a two meter high roof it's longer again, but just as wide, the width doesn't actually change with any of the crafters. It's all about length and height as large vans go. Just like in the load bay, the change to the height of the crafter means that it's now actually a pretty easy step up into this thing. Even the doors are fairly light, easy to close. And in fact, that sets the theme for the cab of the new Volkswagen crafter, which that it is approachable, even a friendly place to spend time. And if you've driven a recent Volkswagen commercial vehicle, a Caddy, an Amarok, or even a recent Volkswagen passenger car, this will all seem very familiar. Here in front of you is the normal Volkswagen passenger car steering wheel, which is small. It's not an enormous tiller. You don't feel like you're driving the bus. Normal Volkswagen screen, climate control, dials. So this all feels pretty welcoming and easy the first time you step up into the crafter. Now the cab is really all about practicality as you'd expect for a mobile office that crafter drivers will pretty much spend all day driving. And that starts with the fact that the van and the single cab chassis versions are actually three seaters by default up front rather than two seaters. And what you can see here, if I move this stuff out of the way, is that the third seat in the center has been folded down and it reveals a, a tray with two big cup holders and uh, sort of a nice bounded storage area where things aren't going to slide out. What you can do if you want to carry someone else, nice easy release, fold that up and you've got a third seat ready to go. What you can do is you can option up both the driver's seat and the passenger's seat separately to be a really high grade of seat, what's called the ergo active seat in the crafter, which is actually a suspended seat, like in a big rig or in a bus, which means that as you go over big bumps in the crafter, it isn't gonna jar your back. And in fact, the craft is the first big van that's been certified all good by the German Institute for healthier backs or something along those lines. And that certainly sounds pretty good to me. Now, there's lots of other storage options here. Uh, there's a nice big tray on the passenger side uh, above what is a fairly large glove box. Enormous trays up the top here in front of you where you can easily just slide stuff straight in. Nice little um, pocket right here next to the dials where you can put a phone or a drink. So there's lots of places that you can stash stuff, which is great for something that you're gonna be spending an awful lot of time in if you own this vehicle for your small business or if you're a driver that's been assigned a new crafter this is going to be a pretty easy car to use and live with uh, the one way that the crafter really differs with other vehicles volkswagen produces is that it's constructed out of really durable materials you don't sort of get the premium servicing that you would find in a vw passenger car and that's a good thing these vehicles are used in heavy duty situations so Lots of nice, hard, easy to clean materials. However, the seats themselves are actually nice and soft and comfortable for a full day on the road. Look, you're never gonna get away from the fact that the Crafter is a pretty large vehicle. But that said, the feeling of familiarity does actually continue when you start driving the thing. And that's because it doesn't feel a world away from something like an Amarok Ute, which in itself doesn't feel a world away, really, from something like a Volkswagen Touareg or Tiguan. What they do with these commercial Volkswagens is they really do try and engineer the feeling of the passenger cars into the way they drive. And honestly, it works. That starts with the engines. So you can get the Crafter with two toughened up versions of Volkswagen's EA288 two liter turbo diesel four cylinders. 
There's one called the TDI 340, which is the base engine with 103 kilowatts of power and 340 newton meters of torque. But then the higher grade engine, the TDI 410, which has 130 kilowatts and 410 newton meters, is the engine that most people are gonna go for. And that's the one that we've got here. You're able to get the Crafter with a choice of either a six speed manual or an eight speed torque converter ZF automatic gearbox. And most people are gonna go for the auto. Interestingly, there's been a real change in the uh, commercial segment uh, and in cargo vans over the last five years in that automatic has gone from being a very, very small share of sales to easily the majority. And within the next five years, almost all sales in this segment will be auto. And so it's a good thing that the Crafter has a really excellent automatic gearbox. So the ZF8 speed is well known. It's used in a bunch of cars out there, uh, including in Volkswagen's own Amarok Ute. And it feels just as good here in the Crafter. Really nice shifts, imperceptible, smooth, never jerks off the line, unlike a lot of Volkswagens with uh, DSG double clutch autos. This is a real no-brainer auto gearbox. That said, the six-speed manual is also nothing to complain about, but for people that get an auto crafter, no issues at all. Now, the front-wheel drive version is going to be very, very popular. That said, for $4,500 more, you can option a four-motion all-wheel drive system, which apparently um, there's been a lot of early interest from, from crafter customers because it'll be more versatile and usable on dirt and in uh, countries that have worse weather situations. Now, with the diesels, they are small turbocharged engines, so I know some of you are gonna be thinking, what use is something like that, which is you know, relatively complex and sophisticated in a commercial operation? Well, naturally the craft is brand new, so I can't comment about reliability. But that said, these two litre turbo diesels have been used in, in Volkswagen commercial vehicles for quite some time now, including the Amarok for about six years. And reliability doesn't seem to be an enormous issue, so I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. That said, only time is really going to tell. The rest of the driving experience is uh, it's decent, so the ride quality is not too bad, unladen. Um, it gets better with a load in the back, unsurprisingly. Um, so for the front-wheel drive crafter, you've got an independent front suspension, McPherson strut, in the back, there's a rigid rear axle with leaf springs, and it actually copes with bumps okay. It's not that uncomfortable, but that said, if you are gonna be driving lots of uh, distance and time in the crafter over really crap roads, I think upgrading to the Ergo Active seat would be a really smart decision because that way it just takes that strain off your spine with every bump that you go over. Instead, the seat moves up and down and protects you and your bones from the impacts of the road. The handling of the crafter, the steering is all new. So what it now has is electric power steering, which is new for this segment. It means that the steering is very light, um, which is great um, for maneuvering something like the crafter around town. And it also means that they've been able to engineer in a number of new adaptive safety systems to the crafter, which require electric power steering. So that's stuff like active lane keep assist. So unlike passive lane keep uh, in something like the Mercedes-Benz vans, um, there's actually a camera working on the crafter that helps to keep it in its lane. It'll actually be able to steer itself back and forth rather than just beeping at you. Now that's optional. What isn't optional, what's standard is autonomous emergency braking with forward collision warning. So that's really good to see. You do have to option up most other adaptive safety technologies and that's worth doing on something so big and relatively cumbersome. So blind spot monitoring, I've been enjoying that today for sure. Uh, rear cross traffic alert, which is obviously a fantastic innovation for a van that you can't really see too much out the back of when you're reversing. Uh, automated parking is a rather fascinating thing that they've been able to put in once again thanks to the electronic power steering and also adaptive cruise control. So you really can option up the, uh, the crafter to a pretty high standard of safety, certainly higher than the Amarok Ute and very similar to Volkswagen's own passenger cars. So while I might have started this day with little experience in large vans, a full day of driving and picking apart the new Volkswagen Crafter was an enlightening experience. The competition is strong at this end of the market with established players from Iveco, Renault and Ford. Plus there's a new Mercedes-Benz Sprinter on the horizon, which is kind of the Crafter's arch rival. They used to be built on the same platform, but they're now divorced and both are looking better than they have in years. Anyway, the Crafter certainly surprised me with how easy and familiar it was to drive. 
how comfortable the cabin can be, especially with the Ergo Active seat, and how much safety gear is available. If you're a fleet buyer or owner operator needing something very big but not very intimidating, the Crafter would be an easy choice.